They own things like My Little Pony, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Power Rangers, Nerf, Monopoly, Scrabble, and basically every board game a child has ever played, and apparently even Peppa Pig. No fucking way! Hello, woo! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. As always, I'm your host Simon Wams. In this of 2022 in review, worst business decisions of the year. Elon, where are you? Where are you, Elon? You bought a company that doesn't make any money, and you made it worse. And you bought it for like 50 billy. Holy sh! That is an incomprehensible amount of money. Love it. <laughs> Let's shit on some stuff today. I love these ones. I love these ones because it's like that inner like, oh god. People have made worse decisions than me. Yes! Finally! I've made some bad decisions. There are a lot of famously horrible business decisions like Eminem's passing on the movie E.T., the old search engine Excite not buying Google for $750,000. <laughs> Excite? What the f***? I barely remember this. But the problem is, as I always say with this kind of stuff, if Excite had, had bought Google, Google wouldn't exist as we know it today. It would be just like shit. It would be like Excite, which I assume is rubbish because no one used... Does, I mean, I was kind of surprised like, uh, to find out, you know, Yahoo is... It, they've got this whole thing going on. They own, like, media properties, and they do news and finance stuff. And I was like, well, Yahoo, you survived. Yeehaw! <laughs> Or Hulk Hogan missing the phone call that would have put his name on the foreman grill because he was picking his kids up from school. I know that second example has come up before, and Simon is of the belief that if someone bought Google, then Google wouldn't be Google anymore. Yes, Kevin. And Simon's not of the belief. That's that's fact. <laughs> I mean, you can't be 100% sure. But, I mean, Google's awesome. And I can't imagine that Excite buying it for 750 grand would somehow make it more awesome. It just doesn't seem very likely. He may or may not be right, but it was still a terrible decision not to buy them. Yeah, I guess, because then at least they're getting rid of the competition. So that's good. 750 grand to get rid of your competition. It's a lot of money, but it seems very reasonable, doesn't it? There were two possible outcomes. Option one is they bore Google and everything would have happened, as it still did, meaning they bought a billion dollar company for fractions of penny on the dollar. Option two, Simon is right, and that's still works out better for them. I literally just typed excite.com into a web browser to see if the site still exists. It does, something I may not have needed to do if Google never rose to prominence. Wait. Wait, option three is just they, they, they wasted 750 grand and so they fell from prominence even, even faster. They just would have wasted and then no one would have Google, which would suck. That's option three. That's the option I believe in. But hindsight is 2020 and we're in 2022 now. While most famous terrible business decisions require some amount of hindsight to understand as oh, we need to see how things will play out, 2022 has been a pretty extraordinary year. This year, we all get to bear witness to some profoundly stupid decisions with immediate monetary consequences, the kind of consequences where people and companies lost billions of dollars overnight. <laughs> Elon! What have I done? I hate that people are sharing. Like, people share on Twitter, you know, that um, that famous meme that I love, you know. 20 getting an extra hour. When the clocks change, people are like, getting an extra hour in 2022 is like getting a bonus track on a Yoko Ono album. And I'm like... I don't know, like, guys, that was good in 2020 when COVID was around and everything sucked. And then 2021 was also pretty lame because, you know, there were still all sorts of restrictions. Now 2022's rolled around and it's like, what's COVID again? <laughs> what's that? No, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> Which is nice because I like, you know, freedom and people not dying of COVID for, you know, that's nice. That's a, that's a plus. 2022 is objectively better than 2021 and 2020. F yeah. The f is he talking about? I mean, obviously, the economy seems to be in the toilet, but look, I'd rather my stock portfolio go down a little bit and I could go outside for a beer because that's the kind of short term thinker that I am. <laughs> So assuming I haven't been fired for that awful 2022 joke, let's go dunk on some horrible ideas. Elon Musk buying Twitter, it's first up. Questioning the wisdom of Elon Musk on the internet is a dangerous proposition when I went so far as to suggest that all science and empirical data agrees that terraforming Mars within our lifetimes is not a scientific possibility. The comment section was flooded with Elon stands desperate to prove how it's absolutely wrong with no evidence whatsoever. Um, yeah, do, does Elon Musk even think they're gonna, like, I, I, I believe there will be people living on Mars within my lifetime, 100%. Like, I, that seems very likely to happen. Uh, and I think Elon Musk is probably going to be a very large part of that, which is fantastic. I don't think Elon Musk believes that 
Mars is going to be terraforms within our lifetimes, right? Because that is an insane thing to say based on you know, empirical data. You see, Elon is like Santa Claus. The claims surrounding him may seem to defy all scientific reasoning, but if he doesn't deliver the presents you were promised, it's not because everything he told you was a lie, it's because somebody didn't believe in him hard enough. <laughs> I've been believing so hard in Santa Claus this year. I'm hoping to get everything I wish for. I was like, I was trying to think of what I wanted for Christmas. And I was like, I quite like, you know, a new Xbox. Or I was thinking I'd like a little piano uh, for work. I have a piano at home, but I never play it because, you know, kids. Like, the time that I would play piano would be when my kids nap which is the reason I can't play piano. So I was thinking it'd be nice to get a little piano for work. The reality is I will never play on any of this shit because you know what I do at work? I work. So I don't know. I was just like, I don't know what I want for Christmas. Maybe work. <laughs> I don't know. As long as everybody keeps believing in him, then Tesla stocks those SpaceX rockets to Mars and Dogecoin will continue to soar higher than Santa's magical reindeer. Unfortunately, the thing with that trick is it tends to work better when Elon is saying stuff, not doing stuff. When he announced he purchased just under 10% of Twitter, Tesla stock saw a spike from a low of about $255 per share to almost $400 per share, nearly matching the stock's all-time high. The stock market's weird. Like, I'm sure there's a reason that happens, but it's very like, why? Why did that happen? Don't get it. Those things don't seem to be related. Then, which is why I like I say I have a stock portfolio. I just put things in those um, what's it called? Just those tracker funds, you know, where it's just like they just do what the market does. It's like a basket of things because you can't like. I just don't really believe. Like I, I'm definitely too dumb to be able to like pick the right stocks and stuff. And it seems like from the data, even the people who are really big brain at it are also not very good. Warren Buffett had that bet with that dude. And he won because <laughs> he was just like, just, just, just put it in the, the tracker funds. So yeah, look, what am I talking about? Why are we talking about that? Oh yeah, I don't understand the stock market. Don't get it at all. Then he turned down a seat on the board and announced an intention to buy Twitter, and suddenly things started taking a turn for the worse. This was not only one of the worst business decisions of the year, but the decision spanned the entire year. Elon made his initial announcement in mid-March, but the sale wasn't completed until the very end of October, the day before courts would have moved forward on eventually forcing him into buying the company anyway. This is completely reasonable though, Kevin. I mean, he's buying something that's like 50 billion. It's going to take a while. It's not like he walked into the shop to buy a Mars bar. He's buying a giant corporation. But before we get into exactly what made this such a bad decision for Elon, we need a little backstory on Twitter first. The company has lost money in the last three or five years, despite pulling in a few billion dollars in ad revenue each year. But all of the ads that I see on Twitter tend to be for scams. Lately, I mean, I don't want to say that they're all scams, but let's just say they're allegedly scams. And it's all like crypto exchanges. And I'll always be like, block, I don't want to see this ad again. I don't, what would I use a crypto exchange for? I'm not going to use that. I don't give a fuck about that. And I'm sure if if you're advertising to me it's a scam like if i wanted to exchange some crypto i would google search that and i'd go with the top result because i'm not a clown like what was that 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 giant one that collapsed with the guy who's got like three names what's his fucking name sam something but that that guy's like and it, people lose money tons of money i don't know it seems very risky and then it's like, now, whenever a celebrity is endorsing something like that, I'm like, why are you paying for a celebrity endorsement? Just make a good product. It makes me think it's sketchy now. Like, I'm sure you're paying like millions of dollars to uh, unnamed Formula One driver who I happen to love, who promotes one of these things that I see on Twitter all the time, dressed in a ridiculous magician's hat for some reason. <laughs> What's going on? But it makes me trust it less, even though... The guy's great at Formula One. And I mean, fine, take the bag, man. Take the bag, whatever. I don't give a shit. Someone could argue that they were losing money because of a bloated, overpaid staff, and that's certainly what Elon felt. But the fact that whether the platform would make or lose money each year was basically a coin flip is not a sign of strength. It certainly doesn't indicate a large amount of room for growth. It's also important to note that Twitter had been offered up for sale before, and they weren't any takers. There are plenty of articles out there, ones that were published before Elon indicated any interest in the company, just in case people want to allege buyer, stating that Twitter has been a financial failure since its inception. Just weeks before his offer to buy the company, they had again failed to meet their ad revenue or user growth forecast. The smart money wasn't to bet on Twitter, and anyone else that may have considered buying it realized that. That backstory is a red flag for this purchase. Red flag number two is that Twitter's board unanimously voted to adopt a poison bill policy the day after Elon made his intentions of buying the company known. A poison bill, in this context, is when a company essentially throws shitloads of money into a new 
new stock to devalue the stake of the person attempting a takeover. It's a common tactic, but the company that no one else wanted to buy would rather swallow poison than be sold to him. If you're a giant company and no one wants to buy you, but you've put yourself up for sale and someone comes along and wants to buy you, why would you be like, no, anyone but him? He's like the richest man in the world. If anyone's going to be able to pull it off, it's probably going to be him. Just take the fucking money. What's up with that? And they did, ultimately. And, uh, look, I don't know. Whoever used to own Twitter, like that at Jack or whatever, Jack Dawson? Dobson? Dorsey? Dorsey? Or is that the, isn't that the guy from that, that British... Th Dorsey? Dorsey feels right, but he also, that also sounds like the name from one of those novels in England where they all wear big wigs and shit. But I feel like it is Jack Dorsey, isn't it? Isn't it? Who cares? Let's move on. Almost definitely. But if that meant Elon was serious about taking over the company, what was almost definitely? Uh, sorry, got scroll back. A few moments later. Uh, was their decision personal? Oh, about Twitter's board not wanting to approve a sale to Elon. Almost definitely. But it meant that if Elon was serious about taking over the company, it was going to cost him. But everybody has a price, and Elon offered them one that they would be fools not to take. Although Twitter has a market cap of about $31 billion, the company's net worth was estimated at just over $13 billion. I don't understand finance. Elon offered to buy the company for roughly $44 billion, or more specifically, he offered to buy it for $54.20 per share. Given that the man has an affinity for the dankest of memes, this may have been intended more as a 420 joke and less of a serious offer. Uh-oh. Don't joke about that shit. There's some stuff like, Elon, don't you learn? He got fined like $50 million when he said he wanted to take Tesla private or some shit like that. And I'm like, bro, don't you learn your lesson? Anytime you want to tweet finance, just run it past a finance guy. You must have them. You run like 700 companies. Just ask Peter in finance. Be like, Peter, Peter, can I tweet this? And Peter be like, good lord, no, Elon, please. No, don't do that. That's insane. They will they will hold you to that. And at the very least, you're going to get a giant fine. And Elon will be like, cheers, Peter. Thank you very much. On with my day. Don't do it. No. Easy, easy. Elon, you're the richest man in the world. Hire a Peter. Just have him on WhatsApp. Just have him sit at a desk all day. And anytime you're unsure about anything, just drop him a quick WhatsApp message. And he'll be like, yes. No. Yes. And he'll be happy. He'll make a fortune. You'll be happy because you'll be saving a fortune in fines and purchasing companies that you don't want to purchase. Everyone would be better off. Everyone should get a pizza when you're that rich. Joke or not, that price was 38% higher than the current share price, and since Bernie Madoff was able to scam people out of billions by offering them a 10% annual return, shareholders would have been fuming if the board rejected an instant 38% return. Of course, then there was the whole legal battle and arguments about fake accounts and stuff, but eventually, over seven months later, the sale was finalized. Despite being allegedly worth a couple of hundred billion dollars at the time, people like Elon don't actually have cash money. All of that money is tied up in investment, so in order to push the sale through, he had to find investors, sell $9 billion worth of Tesla stock, and personally take on $13 billion in loans. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's been over a month since the sale and things have not been going well. Ooh, it's been, you're definitely, it's been a definitely over a month when you're seeing this video, dear audience. We're not going to get into a discussion about whether anything Elon is doing or considering for Twitter is good or not. I'm just gonna say it's probably not. Like that, that, that selling of the blue check marks thing in the things where the brands were like, where it looked like a legitimate Eli Lilly account or whatever, Ellie Lilly. What the fuck is that company called? Is it really called Eli Lilly? That sounds like a random dude. What's your name, Eli? Hi, Eli, Eli Lilly. <laughs> um, and then they said they're gonna make insulin free on the fake accounts and it tanked their stock. Wow. <laughs> Whoever was doing that, if they didn't short sell that shit before making that fake account and tweets, I mean, that would have got you more than $8 right there. Or why so many people think that the First Amendment has anything to do with corporations rather than only applying to the government. Um, look, I'm not an American, Kevin, and I know you are, but I believe aren't there some like court cases that came later that d did say that it does have some application outside of just governmental application? Like the interpretation of that First Amendment has been something like that? Because I always thought it was just related to the government, but then I found out it's a little bit more expansive than that, which seems weird. But look, we've had this discussion on Brain Blaze before that the, the freedom of speech thing is being weird and Elon's fucking rock hard for it. What we do know is that the company immediately began losing advertisers as a result. Companies like General Motors, who were spending about $1.7 million per month advertising on the platform. I know that's not a lot of money for like General Motors, but it does seem like I wish General Motors were giving me $1.7 million a month to advertise. I'll be like General Motors. 
I don't even know what General Motors make. I know they must own, they probably own like, I don't know, Chrysler or some shit like that. Some big American car company. But I don't know. And then I'd have to drive a General Motors car, which would probably be American. And then I'd be like, oh God. <laughs> so big. Why is this? I don't know. My general experience with American cars is they feel like they're like a buffet. There's lots of food and you can eat as much as you want, but it's not very good. I'd just rather have something like I drive a Volvo and it's not giant. It's a reasonable size and it all feels really well put together. Whereas I drove a Chrysler once and I was like, it feels massive, but it all feels a little bit hollow. And then it does about four miles per gallon. That was my experience of American cars. So, I mean, I, Ford not. I, I've driven like Fords and they, I don't know, do we get different Fords? We get like a Ford Focus. It's like this little Ford car or Ford Mondeo. Do you get those in America? They feel like little European cars for some reason. I don't want to bag on American cars too hard. No, I do. They kind of suck. I'm sorry. Losing several high-profile advertisers like that when already losing money half the time and failing to hit ad numbers is definitely not a good thing. Maybe Twitter's fortunes will turn around, though it currently seems unlikely. However, while taking on billions of dollars in personal debt and dumping billions more of stock into another company just to buy a sinking ship is stupid, it does get worse. When you have someone as loud as Elon, the things they do tend to affect other investments as well. Starting at the beginning, I'm sorry, it wasn't a Chrysler, it was something called a Dodge. The, the one with the horns. That that car, that that was what I was thinking of. Not a Chrysler. I'm sorry, I don't think I've driven a Chrysler. Do they make the Escalade? Chrysler Escalade? That sounds right. I saw one of those the other day uh, on like streets in Europe, like in Prague. And I was like, I see, you see them on like TV shows and stuff and they never look that big. Like in Entourage, they're always driving around in those... Um, Chrysler's, the, the Escalades or whatever, you know, like they're, they're just big, black, scary cars and they never look that big. This thing is fucking huge. Like, it looks ridiculous on European roads. You're like, where are you going to park that? You're going to have that problem, you know, when you're driving a car with a roof box on it and you can't fit into the uh, into the parking because the roofs are too low. That's going to be a problem in your everyday life when you don't have a roof box on your car because you're driving a, a, a an Escalade. It's bizarre. When you have someone as loud as Elon, the things they do tend to affect their other investments as well. Starting at the beginning of January in 2020, Tesla stock shot up from $20 a share to over $400 per share. It had started to cool off, and yes, when Elon was talking about buying Twitter, it did see some gains. However, once he started fighting over the deal and the, the price started to come down, continuing to do so after the purchase went through, Tesla stock hit $167 per share, the lowest it had been in two years, and less than half of where it was earlier this year. It turns out that Elon was also learning the reason no one else wanted to buy Twitter. It's not worth the headache. He was spending increasing amounts of time at Twitter and dealing with Twitter matters rather than focusing on other businesses, and Tesla's shareholders were taking notice. He did find time to show off the new Tesla semis that are now available, so perhaps stock prices will see an uptick. The semi can go 500 miles on one charge, but given that the most common response from long-haul truckers seems to be, that's really cool, but tell me when it can do 700 miles, those gains may be short-lived. As we reach the close of the year, Elon's net worth has fallen by over $100 billion dollars. Shit. Dude. Uh, I know it's all fake money and it doesn't matter, but that is a lot of money. This is an imaginary amount of money based on stock prices and the market is down in general, but Elon's losses far eclipse those of other billionaires and have only been accelerating since the acquisition of Twitter. Now that he's let that sink in, ah, uh, maybe that's why he's so desperate to get everyone to pay him $8. Magic the Gathering releases product designed for nobody. Kevin, <laughs> you gotta slide it. It's like the, the number of times Magic the f***ing Gathering comes up in Kevin's scripts is unreal. And you know what, Kevin? I still don't know what Magic the Gathering is. It, I feel like it's a card game somewhat like a mix between Pokemon and Bridge. And I know I'm wrong, but that's what I... I and the only reason I'm doing saying that is that's what I imagine in my mind. It feels like the seriousness of Bridge players mixed with the fantasy of Pokemon. Am I at all correct there, comments? You don't know what you're talking about, do you? 
Mm, I mean, people watching, you know, like, use the comments. You know what I mean. Since I know Simon doesn't know anything about magic, and many of our viewers may not either, let me first explain why this is important. Let's go. Wizards of the Coast, the company that produces magic, it's the nerdiest name for a company ever. What's your car? Wizards of the Coast Limited. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's so nerdy. I'm sorry. Look, I'm nerdy. Like, I have a deep passion for Star Trek, but some sh is just like, bruh, Wizards of the Ghost. <laughs> Wizards of the Ghost. <laughs> It was purchased by Hasbro in 1999. Hasbro is a fucking massive company. They own things like My Little Pony, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Power Rangers, Nerf, Monopoly, Scrabble, and basically every board game a child has ever played, and apparently even Peppa Pig. No fucking way! My kid woke up this morning, and I love doing this. Like, I ask them what they're thinking about, because now they're like, they're three, they just turned three, and they've reached this beautiful stage where you can, like, fully ask them shit, and they won't just be like, yes or no. They'll give you a proper answer. And so, like, I just, like, like when they're just sitting and thinking about something, and often in the morning, you know, they'll wake up and they'll be a little tired, and I'll be like, what are you thinking about? And the other day, they were like, I was thinking about my brother, and I'm like, oh, that's so sweet, because she has a little, like, one-year-old brother, and I'm like, oh, that's so nice. And then I asked her this morning what she's still what she thinks she's thinking about, and she says she's thinking about Peppa Pig. <laughs> Peppa Pig with a weird sideways face. It's too late, George. His presence is already here. <laughs> Despite owning all of these IPs, Wizards of the Coast makes up 15% of Hasbro's sales and 24% of their profits. Oh my lord. Magic Really? You make Monopoly and Scrabble and Wizards of the 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 fucking magic wizards with the coast gathered up on the coast? They're like that's that's a lot. Holy sh Magic the Gathering is popping. Maybe you should get into that. She get into Magic the Gathering. Maybe it's fun. If I if I had time for hobbies, maybe I would. So 16% of the total profit of a billion dollar company with innumerable list of IPs comes exclusively from Magic. Last year, the game sales topped a billion dollars, and it has been seen and it has seen a growth in 12 out of the last 13 years that it was owned by Hasbro. Bloody hell! When I started playing 29 years ago, there was a new set of cards. How old are you? Wait, how old can you be to start? Wait, I know how old Kevin is. He mentioned the other day he was about to turn 40. So okay, so he started playing when he was uh, 11. 10. Wow. Okay. Shit. I got, like <laughs> Why am I surprised by this? It's all, it's a game and kids can play games. I just thought like, you know, there's not a lot of things that people start doing. No, there are lots of things like people love video, but I can't Nah, nah, people love shit. It continues. I'm sorry, I don't have a point here. Let's just move on. Good for you, Kevin. Uh, when I started playing, there was a new set of cards released every few months. It was usually four or five products per year, and packs of cards were two to three dollars each, or eight dollars for a larger deck that would normally be what you needed to start playing. Occasionally, there would be supplemental products for collectors and the like, but there were generally half a dozen products or less per year. As time went on, the game increased in popularity and production began ramping up. When I was working as a, as a magic vendor, we had reached the point where there were about ten or eleven new products each year, which was good. We liked the idea of having a new product every month, even if half of them were non-randomized products for $20 that a person would only want one of if there was a reason for people to come in and give us money. I have no idea what that means. We're non-randomized. Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Maybe while they were there, they'd grab some of the then $4 packs of randomized cards to indulge their compulsive gambling addiction. This new pace of products, many of them reasonably priced and aimed at newer players, was working great for a while. However, it was also around this time that some people started to feel fatigued and complained about being inundated with new products. A first player's complaining would be easy to write off. Wizards could put $100 bills in packs and people would complain about the way they were folded. That's just how the community is. But as these complaints slowly increased in frequency, Frequency, wizards came up with a line that they would begin repeating like a broken record in the years to come. This product is not for you. Okie dokie. To be fair, it was accurate. Addiction aside, you don't need to buy everything. A lot of the products were aimed at newer players anyway, and maybe one product per year for higher end collectors. There are a lot of different ways to engage with the game, be it casually or competitively, and different products were sometimes designed for different types of players. That's not at all unreasonable, but something about the phrase, this product is not for you, left a bad taste in a lot of players' mouths. Wait, why? Like, why? I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. I don't understand. 
It was also a crutch, something that they would rely on as justification as they pumped out more and more products. And that brings us to 2022. In 2006, there were four new Magic products. By my count, in 2022, there have been 76 products released thus far, with 15 more announced to go on sale by the end of the month. God damn. If I somehow miscounted, I'm pretty sure it'd be more, not less. That's almost two products every week, and it's not sustainable. Players were already getting frustrated with a number of new products each year, and Wizards repeatedly tone deaf responses. The company didn't care because they didn't have to. They were still making bank. However, that changed in Q3 of this year. For the first time in a long time, year-to-year -year earnings not only hadn't grown, but they were down 15%, according to Hasbro CEO Chris Cox. And this isn't COX, like Cox. His name is actually... And normally I'd be like, this must be a... Uh, like Kevin must be using like a dictation tool or something because no one with the surname Cox would spell it C-O-C-K-S. Oh no, Chris Cox does. <laughs> cock. Cock. It's cock. It's in English. It's because customers were becoming price sensitive. There's a whole lot of backstory, and Wizards of the Coast had fucked up immensely in a number of different ways, making too many products, overprinting these products, and dumping the excess product on Amazon for below wholesale prices so that other stores wouldn't even want to stock magic anymore, have all been bad decisions. But it's time to get to their actual worst business decision of the year. We're in the middle of a year-long celebration of Magic the Gathering's 30th anniversary. Oh, we are? Yay! Woo! 30 years! Wow. Wow, wow. So Kevin started playing, like when this game first came out. Didn't he say he'd been playing like 29 years? Wow. And to commemorate that occasion, Wizards had released a special 30th anniversary set as a thank you to the players. It's a reprint of the original set from 1993, sold in randomized packs of 15 cards, just like it was back then, so that players can experience the joy and nostalgia of reliving the game's origin. The set is sold in boxes of four packs, each directly from Wizards, and the cost for one of these boxes is a thousand dollars plus taxes fuck me it's really i summon pot of greed to draw three additional oh cards God, from my deck and i summon pot of greed to draw three additional cards from my deck the normal mantra of this product isn't for you was no longer going to fly despite being billed as a community-wide celebration this product wasn't for everyone it's just a community-wide celebration if you're a rich member of the community <laughs> Normally, there's some amount of arguing and disagreeing, but the response was not only universally negative, it was intense. After a year of writing for Simon, god damn, really? I've learned, I mean, great, I'm, it's been great having Kevin for a year, I'm just surprised it's already been a year, time flies. I've learned not to take negative comments on the videos too personally. Yeah, lots of my writers, like, they'll read the comments and they'll be like, oh man, people really went into me for this, and I'm like, don't think about it again. <laughs> It's just best not to. And it'll always be some like small comment or some tiny thing, or some like a person who thinks they're like an armchair expert in something, and we got some tiny detail wrong, and it's like I've personally like violated their mother, is like the amount that they get upset by it. And uh, the good news, like, I don't give a shit. Like, I am so far beyond that. I have risen above it and become, uh, become a, an enlightened being. But you know, for new people, it's tough to be as enlightened and brilliant as me. So I often am like, don't, don't worry about it. Don't give a shit. You gotta, you gotta not give a shit. Or just don't read the comments. <laughs> you guys are all awesome, so there's usually not many of them anyway. You're not, no, they're not, Kevin. Not everyone is awesome because we're just complaining. There's obviously people in the comments who are dicks. Hello. But if I was a public facing person for Wizards and I had to read all the hate received from these thousand dollar packs of cards, I would have spent the past two months blackout drunk to try to cope with it all. Oh yeah, there's another detail I forgot to mention. They're not even real magic cards. There's a list of cards the company promised to never reprint, many of which are from this 1993 set, like the Black Lotus. In order to get around this promise, they had to print the cards with a different card back so they aren't tournament legal. If that's confusing for anyone that doesn't play collectible card games, just imagine you have a deck of red bicycle playing cards, but you swap out the Ace of Spades for one from a deck of blue bicycle playing cards. It'll probably be f***ing obvious where in the deck that card is. Okay, yeah, but the point is you can't play with that card in tournaments. I get it, that makes sense. To try and find any market for this product, Wizards reached out to content creators from other games. People whose channels are dedicated to opening expensive boxes of cards, looking for that one one rare Charizard or whatever. They offered to pay a Pokemon YouTuber, presumably thousands of dollars, to open a couple of boxes on their channel. After researching the product, he gave them the same answer Simon gives to Raid Shadow Legends. A Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTuber was less fortunate. He accepted the offer without doing any research first. There's this recent uh, scandal going on on YouTube about 
um, established titles, which is the fuck's sake. The number of people are like, Simon, have you heard about this? The established titles, it's a scam. And I'm like, yes, I know that. And I've never advertised their product because I'm fucking aware that it's a scam because I did 30 seconds of research. And there's so many YouTubers who are like, oh, you know, I didn't know. I didn't look into it properly or whatever. And I'm like, bro, I didn't look into it properly. All like for every sponsor that comes to me, there's a very easy trick and you're welcome youtube world all you do is you type the name of the sponsor so establish titles into google and then you type site colon www.reddit.com and you hit return and then there's discussions about this sponsor on reddit just click on the first one and there'll be dozens of people who've done all that research for you and are telling you whether it's a scam or not it's not very hard it's what i do for all of them there was the same one in that same video kamikoto knives also came and i was like am i going to work with them that my ad guys always ask me because they don't do this research i need to check it for myself and i'm like no because reddit told me it was a scab did i do any of my own research no i'll just rely on the free research from people on reddit who have like less busy lives than me apparently it's not complicated scam 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 it's a scam i'm probably gonna make a mistake someday and everyone's gonna point back and be like simon did you look up this one on reddit i'll be like fuck But that is the world we live in, um, isn't it? I, I welcome my cancellation. <laughs> Within, I'll take a holiday. Within 24 hours of publishing, he deleted the video from his channel and issued an apology. Throughout all of this, and in fact throughout the entire year, Hasbro stock had been steadily declining and people took notice. Among those that took notice was Bank of America. Though their article was very poorly researched and contained a lot of problems, their ultimate conclusion, what the f is Bank of America? Bank of America? I'm assuming that's a fucking bank. So why are they writing an article? Their article is very poorly researched and contains a lot of problems. Their ultimate conclusion was pretty accurate. Hasbro is attempting to kill their golden goose that is magic for short-term gains. Bank of America double downgraded their previous recommendation of buying Hasbro stock, skipping over hold, and instead recommending people dump their investment in the company. Wait, what the fuck? This is a bank. <laughs> my, my bank banks, they hold my money, they lend me money. They don't tell me to buy Hasbro stock. What the fuck? What is this bank doing? Is that a thing banks do in America? That's bizarre. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Given the incredible backlash to the thousand dollar packs of fake cards and the general glut of products, a Wizards employee was asked during a live stream if they had plans to respond to the criticism by slowing down the pace of new products. Players know that they're generally working on stuff at least two years in advance. That means that this would have been the perfect opportunity for some sort of political non-answer, saying there's already stuff in the pipeline for the next X amount of time, so there won't be any immediate changes, but we'll examine the possibility of blah 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 corporate bullshit. Oh my god. The way Kevin ended that quote with blah, 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 corporate bullshit. I was reading that. I already turned off and I can't tell you what I read. Because you know when you read something that's just like blah, 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 and your brain just turns off? Yes, there you go. That was that. It would have been the perfect opportunity for that, but they wanted a different direction. The answer given was essentially, we aren't changing anything. If you don't like it, don't buy it. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you, I'm out. <laughs> At one point in his answer, he definitely started to refer to the game's player base as the common people before cutting himself off, pausing for an awkward amount of time and calling them the public. Ah, oh, that is cringe, my dude. <laughs> Although the first part of that I totally get, because people are like, Simon, I liked this channel when it used to be you standing up. And I'm like, fascinating, so don't watch. <laughs> but the difference is... I am not trying to sell you anything. All of this shit is for free. I get paid by adverts, which you might even block. Um, so look, you know, I'm not saying don't buy it, but you don't have to watch. There's lots of other stuff you could watch, and I genuinely, genuinely don't care. Because I think there's there's lots of other people who will watch it and enjoy it. So, okay. Hasbro stock has fallen from just over $100 a share to barely $55 per share over the course of this year. The 45% drop making it one of the worst performing stocks in the S&P 500, which is overall down by 15% this year. You guys own a company that can literally print money. How do you f*** that up? Kanye goes DEFCON 3 on the Jews. Oh my god, this one is so f***ing cringe. And it's beyond cringe. It's like, I mean, you can't really call anti-Semitism cringe, can you? It's just like, what the f***, Kanye? <laughs> what are you up to, shit, my dude? <laughs> ah! Simon's probably eyeing the clock. 36 minutes, Kevin! <laughs> 
I'm sending you an email after this, and I literally sent you an email like two days ago about trimming shit down. It doesn't work when they're this long, Kevin. Kevin! Simon's probably eyeing the clock and getting a little annoyed at the length of this episode, but little annoyed would be an understatement. But fortunately, this one requires very little context, so it's short and it's absolutely worth including. One day, Kanye West decided to include, but when I wake up, I'm doing to go Death Con 3 on the Jewish people. Obviously, it's Death Con, short for defense condition, not Death Con. And 3 is in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, DEFCON 1 is like the highest DEFCON. So it could have been worse for the Jewish people. I didn't even think about that. But it couldn't have been worse for Kanye. A week later, he appeared on the podcast Drink Champs, where he... What the f*** name for a podcast is that? Where he doubled down by making the statement, I can say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Obviously, the now what is they dropped Kanye and his Yeezy brand of sneakers that made up the majority of his net worth. Ha ha ha! Fucking loser. Adidas decided decided they would rather give up $250 million in expected profits from the sneakers that associate themselves with Kanye and fucking respect added ass. He was also dropped by Balenciaga and JP Morgan. What the fuck are JP Morgan doing with Kanye? It's like Kanye says bank with JP Morgan. The guy is so financially irresponsible that he said some anti-Semitic it, and then he locked, lost a $250 million, which was the majority of his net worth. <laughs> no wonder they dropped him, Kanye. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Oh, what a loser! Good! Good! In the span of one day, a company founded by an actual Nazi and another com company currently involved in a scandal involving an advertisement featuring children, BDSM teddy bears, and a printout of a court ruling on child pornography. I don't even know this. <laughs> Both looked at Kanye and said, Nah, this guy's too controversial for us. These remarks resulted in Kanye losing $2 billion overnight, with him having a paltry $400 million net worth. Like a fucking loser. $400 million. Fucking loser loser that is child's that is money for that is the amount of money that a child has ah you may think directly challenging adidas was kanye's worst business decision of the year but it's not he said stupid shit before a lot of stupid shit, but somehow he's able to keep recovering from these and there was speculation that another sneaker company like nike may take on the yeezy brand if you do if the, if you do company out there Everyone's going to boycott the shit out of you, bro. However, after already doubling down at great personal expense, Kanye decided to go the extra mile and triple down on being so anti-Semitic on an episode of Infowars that he made Alex Jones look sane. Like, I hate Alex Jones. Everyone knows I hate Alex Jones. Like, that comes up often on this show. The guy is a total douchebag. I saw this show where Kanye was interviewed, and Alex fucking Jones is like, whoa, Kanye... <laughs> Don't say, what are you saying? Don't say that, Kanye. No. And I'm like, wait, is Alex Jones the sane one? It was fucking mental. Alex Jones offered him a very softball prompt saying, You're not Hitler. You're not a Nazi. You don't deserve to be called that and demonized. Well... The first words out of Kanye's mouth were, Well, I see a good thing about Hitler also. That's right, rather than try and relax for a minute, regroup and rebuild his empire, Kanye went full Nazi. Alex Jones is quite possibly the only person on earth so awful that Elon Musk wouldn't unban his Twitter account, yet he looked like a goddamn saint in this interview. As Alex tried to rein him in, Kanye kept repeating, I love Nazis, I love Hitler. <laughs> So let that be the moral of today's episode. Sure, most of us will never have to worry about mismanaging a billion dollar IP or having to deal, having to decide which billion dollar company we want to buy, but I think we can all make the sensible decision to not allow ourselves to be broadcast saying the words, the Holocaust did not happen. Yeah, it's not that fucking hard, is it? Thanks for watching. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table especially Hitler.